Do these five things in the sock, and not only will you have more confidence in your abilities, but also show others why you are extremely valuable. In the sock, there comes a time where people are way too focused on trying to clear out the queue and not stop to think about how can they improve the process or documentation. Without doing this, it eventually leads into alert fatigue, meaning you get a lot of alerts and that's all you do, just alerts. You'll come to hate the job and also provide terrible escalation. Without proper processes, you as a SOC analyst will likely have less time to perform deep dive investigations as well as provide the quality that the client is looking for. Overall, hurting the business. Which is why in today's video, I want to talk about the five things that you should keep in mind the next time you are employed as a SOC analyst. Number one, documentation. Although this may seem common sense, having a proper documentation as well as updated documentation is actually quite rare. So if you are in the SOC or you are about to be employed in the SOC, make sure you document your findings, the instructions, and also how the SOC can improve as a whole. In the beginning, you can create the documentation as a self-reference guide, but eventually you want to present this to the SOC manager and maybe recommend to your manager to share this documentation to the other team members as well. This can be a great training reference for the new onboard hires and it will have your name all over it. At the end of the day, you want to make sure that the SOC improves as a whole, which will allow you to have a lot more collaboration and a less toxic environment, hopefully. Number two ask question. How do you create exceptional documents without asking questions? Hmm. Never be afraid to ask questions, especially when it comes to processes. Because SOC environments are heavily process-based, not knowing what to do in certain situations can delay escalations to a client or in extreme cases, delay responsive actions in a live compromised environment. This is especially true for those SOCs that have the capability to perform responsive action, such as containment if they suspect an asset had been compromised. You don't want to be in the position where a live incident is occurring and you're questioning yourself, how do you contain it? Ask your questions, document the processes and response, and see where or how you can improve it. Number three, correlate and deep dive. Here's a scenario for you. You as a SOC analyst received a custom severity one alert about a usage of proc dump. Taking a look at the alert, proc dump was being used on a jump server. The client had marked this jump server as okay to contain if the SOC believes that this jump server had been compromised. What do you do? If the answer was follow the process, one might immediately contain the asset because it is a severity one alert. Because why not? Severity one alert means something bad had happened, right? Right? Not necessarily. When you're investigating any kind of event, context matters. You want to make sure you ask questions such as who is the user? When did it happen? And if there was a maintenance, did it happen because of the maintenance? And more importantly, what else happened during that time? Don't just look at proc dump and think that it's evil. Instead, I want you to always look at the surrounding events leading towards that alert. And always ask yourself, what happened five minutes before and after the alert? Did the user visit evil.com, downloaded malware, executed that malware, and spawned a process which created a run key for persistence, established a C2 connection, which then spawned multiple command prompts for reconnaissance, and then ran prop dump? If so, you'll have a fun day. In other words, do not just look at that one single event and call it a day. Instead, I want you to focus on all of the events that are available to you. That way you can correlate and perform what is called deep dive investigation. Because in the coming days, weeks, months, years, the SOC is moving towards automation, which will enrich the data found in alerts hopefully reduce false positives and use machine learning to identify and alert you on anomalies, which is then your job to truly understand and provide that human element to determine whether that alert or anomaly is evil or not. Number four, learn. You might ask yourself one day, what does evil look like? And that's a great question. It depends. I remember one of my coworkers asking me this exact question. How do you know that that is evil? Or how do you know that that's suspicious activity? And I just, I froze. <laughs> 
To gain a better understanding, you want to make sure you keep up to date and read about blogs and articles that provide you the technical details, especially those that contain the TTPs, the tactics, techniques, and procedures. One of the resources that I love to read is called the Defer Report. They provide reports that are extremely detailed and provide TTPs as well. Reading these blogs and articles that have the TTPs will help you identify what evil may look like. Now, if reading is not your thing, that is perfectly fine. You can always look into pre-built labs, which I've created a video right here that you can take a look at to get started. Continue to learn and expand your knowledge. You'll thank yourself later. Number five, help others. In any job, having an awesome team member just makes everything better, doesn't it? I've seen some people who barely help others and focus on the job and themselves. You don't want to be that person who neglects their teammates. Instead, you want to be there to help others. So not only you can become someone who is comfortable to work around with, but also make the SOC as a whole a lot better. Do those five things while in the SOC and not only will you level up in your professional life, but also your personal life as well. Be a kind person while continuing to improve your craft and willing to help others. Don't focus on one single event. Instead, think big picture and correlate all of the data that is available to you. And lastly, remember to document, document, document. If you are someone trying to get started in cybersecurity, you don't have to do this alone. I want to help you with that journey, which is why I created a site called mydfir.com, which you can sign up for free mentorship, no strings attached. And this is where I'll be posting books I recommend, cybersecurity resources, and blog posts. And that is it for the video. I hope you found it informative. If you enjoyed it, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.